Real excited for today's video here because we're going to be going over a couple articles, one done by Kurt Steele, friend who's part of Lions Nation Unite, proud of what he's doing over there with Yard Barker. So we're going to get into that and have a good time while the lull period continues to go on for about another month and a half. But before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of the Detroit Lions, you want to hear from a fan perspective like myself and a former player like Herman Moore, you need to subscribe to the channel. Why is that? Because that's all we do on here is talk Lions and get different perspective. Let's go. Here we go. Finally, article with Kurt Steele. Check him out on his YouTube channel and Yard Burker as well. He did a article of three defensive veterans who may not make the football team. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on his selections here. Do I agree? Do I disagree? He's going with safety, Futu Melifonwu, number one. I 100% agree with him with the cornerback room so big at depth. We're talking about players galore, adding... Emmanuel Mosley, C.J. Gardner-Johnson, Cam Sutton. That just just makes it difficult for him to potentially make that roster there. And if you look at the safety position, it's even more loaded. Kirby Joseph, Tracy Walker, Brian Brandt, C.J. Gardner-Johnson is a safety as well. You got Will Harrison to make a safety and cornerback. It's going to be quite difficult as well, and he's been injured and inconsistent as his time as a Detroit Lion, like he's talking about here, injuries is one of the reasons and his lack of improvement from a skill set. So I completely agree with Kurt here, 100% think he is a veteran that may not make it. Let me know in the comment section right now, do you think that if Futu Malfano makes the final 53-man roster, put Y for yes or N for no. Let's go to number Two on his list. He's got Julian Aquara, and I 100% agree with him on this one at as well. We have a lot of defensive line talent on this football team. We're talking about, shoot, Aiden Hutchinson, Romeo Aquara, Charles Harris. You got, obviously, Julian Aquara is there, and you got John Kaminsky, Joshua Pascal, I mean, they they have a ton of edge talent, ton of linebackers, ton of defensive line prospect as well. So for me, for a player like Julian Aquara, who is a veteran, he has been injured, has been inconsistent on the field, I think he has a real significant chance of not making the roster, and I agree with Kurt here. I said it last year that he probably wouldn't make the roster. Now he did, but again, it's now even harder for him to make it this year and we'll see how it goes, but I agree with, with Kurt on this one. Do you guys think that Julian makes the roster? Let me know in the comments section. And lastly, and definitely, surely not least, is defensive lineman Levi Anwuzarike, who has done absolutely nothing as a Detroit Lion. He's had this spine injury. He had a back-spine fusion. He has not looked good this offseason. He's just been out there in shorts, having a hard time stretching. He hasn't done anything so far. This will be his year three with the Detroit Lions. The Lions picked up Broderick Martin. They picked up other defensive talent, defensive line talent, assuming and expecting that he is not going to be on this football team. And I think there's a real possibility he gets cut with an injury settlement. And I agree right here with Curtis Steele that he is a player that will not make it. Now, I go to Pride of Detroit here. Jeremy Reisman, he goes, five reasons why the Detroit Lions may not live to the offseason hype. Lions offseason has been absolutely awesome with the hype from the ESPNs and the sports centers, the NFL Network. Everybody's talking about the Detroit Lions as a team that's going to us to win the NFC North and make a playoff run, what they did last year to... Uh, you know, the additions that they did in the talent this offseason, they're a team on the rise. But they want to give five reasons why they may not. It says, huge changes at the skill position. There is a lot of changes here. Jameer Gibbs is not DeAndre Swift, who DeAndre Swift was better. Dave Montgomery is replacing Jamal Williams. Marvin Jones Jr., Jamison Williams replacing DJ Chark. Sam Laporta replacing TJ Hawkinson. So they list this as one of the reasons there. 
Well, I understand that you, you know those one of the reasons, but at the same time, Jamal Williams was with the Detroit Lions for one year. See the same thing with David Montgomery. DeAndre Swift was always injured. Guess what? Jameer Gibbs has not shown that yet. Marvin Jones Jr. and Jamison Williams replacing DJ Chark. That one I I can understand uh, because Jamison Williams has suspended the first six games and Marvin Jones Jr. is an older veteran. But again, DJ Chark put up around the same numbers as Marvin Jones Jr. However, DJ Chark was getting much better the second half of the season. So that one I can see. Sam LaPorta. Laporta replaced TJ Hawkinson. To me, this is not really a reason at all. TJ Hawkinson didn't really do anything a whole lot with the Detroit Lions. Matter of fact, the tight ends got better when he left. Sam Laporta comes in. I think it's a, it's an upgrade. Even though I'm not a big fan of drafting a tight end high, it's an upgrade because TJ Hawkinson, for whatever reason, the offense wasn't working well with him when he was in there. So I think that's not a legit reason. I think the Marvin Jones Jr. Jameson Williams is. That could be. How quickly can the secondary come together? 100%. With that said, not 100%. Because the secondary was terrible. Even if it comes together slow, it's still got to be better than the secondary last year. It was butt cheeks last year. The secondary was terrible. Jerry Jenkins was injured. Jeffrey Akuda was off. Ugh. We had no names out there that was doing nothing. So even if it takes a little bit of time for these guys these guys to gel, automatically it's better. Even if they're not gelling for a while, it's automatically better with the talent because they're so bad last year. So I, I understand that a reason to be, but at the same time, I just think it's already better even if they don't gel. Strength of schedule, this is 100%. Always schedule. You never know. You never know what other teams are going to be. It changes year to year. Always, that's what it does. So even if it may look like it's easy, it may not be easy. Teams you think they're going to be bad may be good and, and vice versa. So schedule is always something you got to put in there, and I agree with that. No problem because you just never know. We never know, and you don't know like how Jordan Love's going to be. You don't know the Justin Fields taking that next step forward. So strength the schedule, I agree with. Injuries always is got to be on here. What if Jared Goff goes down? If Jared Goff goes down, we are in a world of hurt. If he goes down early. Because Nate Sudfield is not Jared Goff. And Hennon Hooker is still on injury. And we assume he's going to be in the pup and maybe be activated around week 10 or something like that. But if you lose a lot of injuries to Taylor Decker, Panay Sewell, Amon Ra, like you're starting to pile up on injuries, your season can go south. We've seen it before instantly, many times. Injuries is always a concern, and that's always going to be on here of why things may not be great. Hopefully this, we got to knock on wood on this one, folks. Injuries is something that we always got to pay attention to because it could definitely F up your day. Sophomore slumps. All right, so it needs to be suggesting that Aiden Hutchinson could temporarily have a sophomore slump or, you know, and not do as well. Same with the Kirby Joseph and the other players that we got, like Joshua Pascal. I That is a legit reason. I can understand that, but Aiden Hutchinson's motor is never ending, and he's motivated. I don't think he's going to have a sophomore slump. I think he's going to get better just because of the type of person he is. Joshua Pascal didn't really have a great year last year. Why? He was injured. Slowly got in there. James Mitchell was injured. He didn't really do anything. Jamison Williams didn't really do anything. So I, I, Kirby Joseph would be the one player, but I still think with all the safety talents, it's going to open him up. So softer slump, it could be a worry, but I'm not worried about it. I'm personally not. And that's it right there. So for me, what do you guys think of both of these, you know, these um, articles here by Kurt Steele, Jeremy Reisman? Do you think that some of these defensive talents could go ahead and and get knocked down? Do you think that there's some concerns about the Lions in the 2023 NFL season? You know, let me know in the comments below. With that said, folks, adios.